Hey, what's up, guys? How you guys doing? This is Ray. This is a video response to Old 64 Goat. Go check him out. He makes awesome videos. Now, let me explain to you his situation. He has his laptop. It's a pretty old system. He's running Windows 98 Second Edition. Now, before you guys say anything, he still uses the system. It's not his main computer, but he has a couple of applications, whatever it is that he likes, are still installed in that system and can be installed Windows XP, Vista, or 7. He still uses that just for that, but again, it doesn't go online. He has a new desktop. He has a new laptop. This is just a computer he just messes around with. But the minute he turns it on, it stops. He has a message that says F1 to low setup, F2 to continue, or something like that. Now, a couple of people have told him, so have I, why don't you just go and load setup defaults? But he didn't want to. And that's fine if he doesn't want to. But nothing's really going to happen when you do that. I'll do it on this Acer laptop. What I'll do is, you're going to get a message. Loads to fall now. That's it. I'm going to save changes. Are you sure you want to save that? Now I'm going to exit. See, on some computers, it's a little different. Some computers, when you select save changes, automatically reboots. Here we go. Let me go back to the F2. Now, if your boot order changes, you could always go to the boot section and configure it the way you want it. See, over here, I only have a hard drive. Since this is a netbook, it has no CD-ROM. Usually, I have my external CD-ROM, and if I need to install Windows or whatever, that's how I do it. I just set it up in the BIOS. But nothing's going to happen. You should just try the option. What I'll do is I'll give you my email, and we can stay in contact if you need. Now, the next thing, he's having an issue with the keyboard. After he presses F2 or whatever it is, it skips that message, and all of a sudden his start beeping like crazy. He has to select alternate, control, delete, and for some weird reason, stops making those beeps. I've seen this happen due to the keyboard malfunctioning. Now, I fixed an IBM, and I think it was the number four key was bad, and it made all those beeps, but it still worked. So what I did was replace the keyboard, solved all the issues now when you take that now i know that's another thing he doesn't want to really take it apart it's not that very hard you're going to take it apart then you're going to take the keyboard you got to be very careful there's a ribbon right under the keyboard that connects to the board and it has these little clips on the side well all of them are different what you're going to do you're going to loosen up those clips pull out the ribbon very gently try to clean the contacts that might help i've seen another computer where the contacts were just dirty some of the keys didn't work so i'm just saying just give it a try you never know you got to try everything if that doesn't work then i think the keyboard is just going bad but before anything Try to load the defaults. Never know. The CMOS battery. I know you don't want to mess with it. I believe you said you were reading the manual. And it's one of those batteries that charge. But sometimes they stop charging. It loses the charge. You have to replace it. All right, this is the CMOS battery. Like I said, this battery sometimes dies. You got to replace it. Over here, you have a little clip. You can take it. It pops right out. There we go. All you have to do... Take it to Radio Shack, show it to them. They'll give you the replacement. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take it, put it right back, turn on your system, load the default settings, or customize it however you want, and you should be alright. You know, I'm not saying this is the problem, but definitely something to look into. I've seen it happen on a lot of computers. Now on some of the newer laptops, this thing is soldered onto the board. But that's a whole different tutorial. One thing I forgot to mention, not every laptop uses this dial. So, I don't really have one of those to show you right now. So all you have to do is, very easy to take out, just pop it off. And the little connectors, just be very careful and take them right out. Don't pull them too hard. I've seen people trying to do that and they just rip the wires right out. But anyway, thanks for watching. Later.